Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our January 2024 MPY general body meeting. I will put on the screen our agenda and our minutes from last month. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, please keep yourself muted uh, so that way we can keep to a timely manner on our meetings. Um, I do ask that uh, you use the raise hand reaction if you are looking to speak or the floor. Um, additionally, we do have uh, people that call from the phone, so you may use star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute and unmute. Uh, first up, I will um, ask to approve the minutes. Uh, let me just switch the screens here to our minutes. So I will go ahead and ask to approve the minutes. May I have a second? Second, Gloria. Are there any in opposition for approval of the minutes? All right, as I hear none, the minutes are approved. Uh, next up is to approve the agenda. So our agenda this evening is on the screen. As you can see, we do have quite a few items to go through, including some voting matters. I will uh, motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? Second, Madam Chair. All right. Are there in, in, any in opposition of approving the agenda? All right. As I hear none, we will move forward with the approved agenda. All right, first on our agenda is reports from our city departments and our representatives. Uh, please keep your comments in up to two minutes or less, and please hold any questions until they are finished. Uh, first up, I will call um, Captain Pettis. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to give you our year-end year uh, stats first. Uh, zone 3 was minus 6% down for the year total. We were down in every category, homicide, rape, ag assault, robbery, burglary, theft from motor vehicles, shoplifting, all other larceny, except for motor vehicle theft. That is the only category we were up in, and we were up 88%. Wow. So we still finished minus 6%, but that 88% uh, really hurt us. We probably could have been down about 25% if it weren't for the Kias and Hyundais. Um, next, I'll tell you um, how we did for the month, and I won't go over every category, but I'll tell you that uh, we had 42 total part one crimes in December compared to 38 in November. Uh, that's pretty good. Usually we do worse in December because of the Christmas holiday and all the porch pirate stuff. And uh, last, I want to give you a few significant arrests that we made. Uh, in the Lakewood community. Uh, there was a shooting in August of 2022 at 1660 Jonesboro, which was the Little Bear. Uh, there was a male shot in the groin as a result of a dispute. Um, we finally located him uh, with the assistance of our APD fugitive unit. Uh, so that's somebody that had been on the lam for about a year and a half. Uh, the next case I want to draw your attention to uh, happened in November. Um, 391 South Bend Drive, there was a female shot by her boyfriend and our fugitive unit along with the U.S. Marshals Southeastern Fugitive Task Force was able, was able to find that guy in Douglasville. Uh, we had a total of 27 arrests in December uh, just in the Lakewood community, and eight of those were for narcotics, which, as we know, is a crime that continues to plague the community. Uh, I didn't want to give you the typical uh, month breakdown, but I have it if anybody wants to hear it. But that's what I have for now. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have any questions for Captain Pettis and our APD officers? Gloria Hawkins, when you have the floor. Madam Chair, do you mind uh, if you will drop the link to our big uh, forum, our public safety forum, which will be held by Zoom in, I think, the 24th? Uh, I think that's probably appropriate to put that out now while Captain Pettis is on. Uh, one, only one question, Captain Pettis. There was some information on Nextdoor 
that the the vendor who is next door in the Amico, the old uh, Chevron, was shot. Is there any? Was there a, an ag, ag assault or shooting at that location? That is true. That happened last night. Um, he was shot near the intersection of Terman and uh, Jonesboro. He was in his personal vehicle. And we don't have any indication as to whether it was related to his run in the business there at 1683 Lakewood, but that is true. He uh, He's stable condition. He'll survive. Hmm. And no no evidence of the who the perpetrators may be? Is that what you're saying as well? That's what have anything at this point other than he was shot by somebody in a different vehicle. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Captain Pettis. You're welcome. And if there's nothing else, we look forward to uh, seeing you guys again next Wednesday on the 24th. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. We do still have one more hand raised. Um, Paul McMurray, you have your, you have yes, the uh, Captain Pettis, could you um, email that report? to uh, MPUI? Sure. And in the future, can you do that? Because we want to save it in our meeting documents. Sure, so I got it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Gloria yeah, Hawkins, when? Um, one, one last question to Captain Pettis. I heard that we're 88% up in auto thefts. Is it that the, the autos are being stolen in zone three or are they just being dumped in zone three? Those are auto thefts. Unfortunately, uh, the, though the Kias and Hyundais are having their software updated so they aren't stolen as easily, every time they try, we still have to take that as a motor vehicle theft report. So um, to toward the end of the year, we were getting to about 50 50 about half of them were successful thefts and the other half they weren't able to leave with the car obviously it's good that they weren't able to deprive the person of their vehicle but they still attempted to commit that crime and zone three is still uh, uh um have has available the locks the uh anti-theft mechanism well, you, you we do have... the, okay. club. the we, club we take them with us and hand them out on every attempted theft very good thank you sir you're welcome Thank you so much. I'll now hand it over to Gloria Hawkins Wynn for our public safety report as we do like to piggyback these two. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but I spoke to Major Rickers. We can see uh, Major Rickers not present and Captain Pettis, is, who is the second in command at Zone 3. We are excited about uh, January 24th. It's a Wednesday evening. I believe we're starting time is 6, 630. Is that correct, uh, Nicole? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay, a little bit later than I thought. It's your opportunity to hear directly from Major Ricker, um, hear in a forum that speaks directly to our questions. Uh, essentially, what Major Ricker, in conjunction with the uh, solicitor's office, in conjunction with, there was one other, the solicitor's office and code enforcement. Code enforcement also falls under Atlanta Police Department. Those three entities are coming in to hear what we feel are the most compelling issues in zone three. Uh, of course, nuisance actions that, as it relates to properties where we have squatters and uh, not just squatters, but folk that where folks have taken and are occupying properties and not keeping them up. Not keeping them up isn't really the issue, but criminal activity that is rooted in some of those locations, particularly in Lakewood. So mark your calendars for January 24th. It is prime time specifically for MPUI alone uh, only. And we're asking at the same time that you bring your questions. We will get a chance to meet the beat officers. We, we're beat 307. And we have at least three beat officers that are, as of, as of last, I think, month, according to Major Ricker, only take calls in zone in, in 307. They're not allowed to take calls in 305 or any of the adjacent uh, in any of the adjacent communities. And it's because of a proactive measure to see, to get the results that we're getting as just saw with, I heard with um, Captain Pettis, uh, crime, part one crimes are down 6%. They've been dropping gradually since I guess the beginning of the year when they were up 15%. And as he said, if we had a handle on those Kias and Hyundais, then we would probably feel like there are results. But I think many of us, even though crime is still lingering, uh, I think many of us are feeling that the proactive measures 
are are showing themselves and just want to say thank you and i'm hoping everyone will show up on the seventh and we're there until folks feel like they're satisfied thank you so much uh melody ford you have your hand raised I have to remember to unmute. Hello, a quick uh, announcement. Um, for those of you that are in the Gammon area, uh, Gammon Avenue near the Carver Community Market, we have a homeless person that's been lingering around, a black male about five feet nine, stocky build with a tan coat, puffy coat, and a backpack. Um, Today, uh, during my shift at the market, he did come in and steal some items. We called 911. Previously, he followed an employee home. Long story short, he has taken up residence in the park. We have some complaints. I'm working with uh, Captain Pettis and Sergeant Luca over at uh, Zone 3. If you see him in the area, uh, I'm going to put my, my mobile number in the chat please let me know because we need to get him. He has two options. He can either get some help uh, at, a, at a local shelter or he will end up in jail. But um, he is harassing an employee and again, trespassing at uh, the Carver Community Market and Cafe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I believe uh, Captain Pettis is still on, um, but if he did not get that in his report, uh, I'll make sure that uh, we forward that information to him again. Yeah, he has it. He's he's been working with me. It's just so hard to catch him. And um, as you know, of course, when we call nine one one, hey guys, seems as if I get kicked off, then everybody gets readmitted. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, let's just get everybody back in here before we get back on. <laughs> Madam Chair, just to follow up with Melody, I think Rebecca put a message in the chat and she's right to consider Pat as just a block or two down the street from uh, Carver Market and it borders right there on South Atlanta. This sounds sounds like this is the prime kind of intervention that Pat uh, fosters in its business. So I can uh, drop a couple of numbers in the chat, uh, but Melody, consider, I, Rebecca put that Put that message in the chat, but I was also going to reach out to you and ask you to consider seeing if uh, Pad could actually go locate him where he is stationed in the park. I think it's a park right there in South Atlanta, but I can't imagine him being there on this evening, even though he may return to it. But I'll put I'll place a couple of numbers in the uh, chat that belongs to some of the principals there at Pad, and Pad occupies that location at seventeen hundred um, seventeen hundred Lakewood Avenue, the old bank building. Okay, he's under uh, a tent uh, near the gazebo in the park. Um, Which park? Uh, uh, Lucius D. Simon, sorry, over okay. here on, off Gammon, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, a citizen states that he has a heater. Don't ask me how, that's interesting, but. <laughs> All right. Um, so we will move on to our next raised hand, um, Adrian. Hi, so this Question. also follows up. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so this also um, follows up with public safety. Um, both Gloria and I serve on the Atlanta Citizens Review Board. I was appointed by APAB to specifically represent MPUs S through Z. So Y is one of the ones that I'm um, that I'm supposed to announce and uh, announce, but you can also go to Gloria if you have any questions. Um, She's appointed by the uh, city council president, I believe. So this is not anti-police at all. This is uh, so the Atlanta Citizens Review Board takes complaints about um, police conduct. I just put in the chat um, um, a a little um, flyer that kind of gives you some examples of the types of complaints that we take. Um, and you, you can go to, so the phone number is on the flyer, or you just go to www.acrbgov.org. So all of this is done in cooperation with the Atlanta Police Department. The Atlanta Police Department, more than anyone, wants for police to be um, 
following uh, approved standard operating procedures. And when they don't, they, they want to hear about it as much as anyone else. So please um, keep this in mind. If you, if you have any issues, um, please report them. And if you have any questions, ask Gloria or, or myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Or, Gloria, do you have anything to add? Did I leave anything out? Thank you, Adrian. Thank you very much. All right. So are there any other questions for our public safety committee or our public safety officer? All right. As I see no other hands raised, thank you guys. Uh, we will move on to purpose-built schools. Cache? Good evening. I am Chasha Colbert Williams, Director of Community Engagement and Student Experience. I just wanted to share some wonderful news with you all from Purpose Built Schools Atlanta. Um, for the first time under the leadership of Purpose Built Schools Atlanta, um, Price, um, Slater, and Carver High School are no longer on the Georgia Department of Education state list. So we have exited the list, and that's the first time that that's ever happened under PBSA. So I wanted to share that wonderful news um, just to let you know some things we're focusing on as we move forward. We celebrated being off the list for one day, and then we were back to business, um, making sure that our scholars continue to be successful. So we're making sure that we're looking at those Lexile levels that our children are reading within their grade band. Also making sure that attendance, we want to make sure that we encourage our children to come to school, that they find value in their education and making school fun for them as well. Another piece that we're looking at at the high school is graduation rate. We wanna make sure our students are graduating within four years and they're college and or career ready. So I just wanted to share that amazing information with you all. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Purpose Built Schools? All right, as I see none right now, I appreciate you coming on the call. We do enjoy the update from you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Gerard Jackson with Park and Rec. You have the floor. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful and warm afternoon. Um, I just have a few updates to um, prepare. The first thing is there will be a brand new CFM. That's the Community Facility Manager for South Bend and Perkinson. Once I get their details, I will let you guys know. It'll probably be the next MPU meeting. I have them present themselves, but there will be a new manager for South Bend and Perkinson. Um, I just want to remind everybody that warming shelters are open whenever it's below 35 degrees. Please contact 301 or you can contact your local rec center to find out what centers in the area or which centers are close for people who are experiencing poverty levels or homelessness. I also want to let everybody know that coyotes have been seen around Atlanta and in our park areas. So I want to know a lot of people walk, a lot of people, you know, play at the playground, be at pavilions. Please, oh, please, oh, please. Number one, if you see one, please report it to Fulton County Animal Control. Second, for your little kids and little dogs, please stay vigilant. Please stay vigilant because as it gets colder, food gets scarce. And, you know, things can happen. We want to make sure that we inform everyone about that so everyone can stay safe. Also, I'll be putting in a check a flyer that outlines all the up and coming events that's happening throughout Parks and Rec. So, you know, you guys can stay informed. And if anything of interest, please contact your local rec center to get further information. At this time, if there's any questions or concerns, please let me know. All right. Do we have any questions for Park and Rec? All right, as I see no hands raised, thank you so much for being on the call. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll have is Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement. You have the floor. Ms. Cofield, you may be muted still. This is Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement for the City of Atlanta. Um, I really, I really don't have anything for today. Um, only thing I'm just concerned with 
the in the particular area is um um cases that I'm dealing with with the courts as far as um nuisance abatement um I have more than one that I'm discussing with the courts um and we're trying to go through those um so with that being said just give me a minute as far as discussing it with you all as far as what they're going to accept as nuisance abatement and what I'm actually offering. Some of them have gone to MRIM and I would love for Jocelyn um, to get on here and to explain the process of the MRIM process. But at this moment, she wasn't available for tonight's call. But I do have her. And maybe she can be at the next meeting to uh, explain the in-ram process to you all as far as how it is. But a lot of the, uh, the cases in you all's area that I'm discussing with the courts, I'm actually offering for the in-ram process. Thank you so much. Um, I think that we would be greatly beneficial to understand the in-ram process. Um, as it is a report that we received and gets uploaded to our website. Um, and I know that it's something that uh, there is no MP University on, so it's not that there is some outside training. Um, Thank I you will... so much, but I'm gonna actually try to get her on here as of next time. Um, she wasn't available this time, but I'll try to get her on it. As no problem, next, just let me time. know. Yeah, just let me know and we'll make sure that we, we get her the time uh, required on our agenda. I'm gonna- Okay, thank you. Yep, I'm going to open the floor for some questions. Gloria Hawkins wins. You have the floor. Madam Chair, I think Ms. Lyles is to be one of the participants at our January 24th meeting. She is, uh, she's probably been in code enforcement probably for over a decade. Uh, as uh, as uh, uh, Inspector Cofield just alluded to her, she she's somewhat up in the chain of command, but she is the one that actually oversees the in-rim actions, which, again, uh Definition is basically the city takes possession of it based on some some failure, whether it's to pay taxes, whether it's failure to uh, remediate. But the thrust of it is Miss Lyles will be present and probably along with several other, uh, perhaps even Miss Tally, who is the director of the department. Yeah, that'd be wonderful if we can get them on uh, on January twenty fourth as well. Um, Paul McMurray, you have the floor. Paul, you're still muted. Ms. Cofield, I was looking up the NREM board on the city website, and it's one of the few boards that don't list its members. Is there any way we can find out who the members of the NREM board are, is? I think that would be left up to Jocelyn and she can discuss with you all who the members are of the interim board. Once I bring her in, and I would love, I was love, I wanted her to come to this particular meeting, but she wasn't able. So um, we were actually let go um, at 11, and then the actual council, actually the city of Atlanta, the actual the whole day. So I will try to get her in here and ask you all who the interim board members are um i know it actually does go to court i don't know the actual process of it um she will be able to explain that to you once she comes in here to the actual meeting certainly talk to her directly um paul is that okay i think i'll send you an email and um okay that sounds good um, do we have any other questions for Officer Cofield at this time? As we have none. Thank you, Officer Cofield, for being on the call. Appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you all so much. You too. All right, next we will bring up is ATL 311, which is with our PAD, Policing Alternatives. Good evening. My name is Nancy Sproul, and I am your ATL 311 ambassador. If you need um, to report any kind of issues, emergencies, or um, not, sorry, non emergency issues, 
You can call 311 regarding potholes, water main breaks, missed trash collection, code violations, or any challenges that you're having with any of the city services. There are five pathways to res resolution. You can dial 311 on your mobile phone Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also email us at ATL311 at AtlantaGA.gov. You can set up your own account on the ATL311.com website or on the mobile app and chat with a vir virtual assistant. And finally, you can contact us by um uh, you can contact us by um, sending information in the survey. I've put the link to the survey in the chat. And if you complete, if you have any issues and you complete the survey that's in the chat, we can have someone to follow up with you um, on the next business day, uh, which will be tomorrow, providing that the uh, the weather cooperates. So I'll re, um, use the remainder of my time for any questions that you have. All right, thank you so much. Do we have any questions for ATL 311? All right, as I see none raised, I do appreciate you being on the call. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other representatives for the city at this time that are not listed in our chat? Yes, good evening, I'm here. Hi, if you can just make sure to uh, drop your information in the chat and you have the floor. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chelsea Heron. I am with the City of Atlanta, the Solicitor's Office. Um, I'm here today just to let you know that if um, you have any traffic citations or if you got information about our PTIT program or if there's any like code enforcement things that we could be able to help with on the court side, maybe um, in conjunction with everyone else, we're more than happy to do so. Um, I will leave my information in the chat so that way you guys have my information. I'm happy to work with you all. Um, as I said, we do um, criminal traffic, some misdemeanors, things like that. Our PTIT program is our pretrial diversion program, which is our dismissal program. If you have a citation that is eligible for our program, you could go ahead and go through our PTIT program or our PTI program and possibly have your ticket dismissed. So if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to leave my information and happy to help as best as I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions for our solicitors? Uh, Gloria Hawkins, when you have the floor. Yes, thanks, thanks. It's Chelsea. Do, are you aware that uh, Miss Carey, we're expecting on the twenty fourth? Would you send a note to the cadre just to confirm? I've not heard confirmation. Uh, apparently, she did a public safety briefing for seniors back in June at the Church of Hope, but is going to collaborate with uh, the NPU on the twenty fourth of January. It's a uh, Wednesday evening, seven p.m. Zoom conference but I had not heard the follow-up. I apparently Tobe Johnson as well in a third person. Tobe Johnson and Miss, Miss Carey are the two that have been the contact people. Would you send out uh, and do a follow-up with the e-board to confirm their um, participation on both code enforcement issues and nuisance is issues? Yes, ma'am, I will make a note to do so. Thanks, I'd, we'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. My, you. my information will be in the chat as well. I'll send okay. it to you right now, okay. I Thanks. also dropped the um, public safety meeting information in the chat once again, just since getting kicked off and everything, the original chat is now missing. It's, it, it's it's via Zoom conference that evening, so that facilitates it for all of us. Okay. I made a note about January 24th. I had it at 6 p.m., so it's at 7. Yes, yeah. it's 7. Oh. Sorry. Okay. I'll make sure that they um, take note of that and that we confirm our attendance. I will reach out to Solicitor Carey in the interim just to confirm she's going to present pretty much what she presented previously, I think. Okay, sounds thanks, great. Thanks much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Are there any other public representatives um, or city representatives on our call? All right, as I see none, we will move to our elected officials. Um, I did not see any on the call, but if there are any, please raise your hand. All right, we will move on to our committee reports. First up is our uh, zoning and uh, land use and code enforcement, Jacob Mills and Robert Mo Bob Morris. 
Hi, good evening, everyone. Hope you can hear me. Uh, lots of lots of zoning activity going on. Just want to remind people that uh, our zoning committee meeting will be the last Wednesday of each month. Happy to have folks attend. Uh, we are having some people attend from this month uh, to talk about the St. Vincent de Paul uh, development. There's also a proposed city ordinance around micro houses that we'll be discussing. So please be, feel free to come join us. Uh, Jacob, anything from your from your end? Um, is Jacob, we're good. Yep, I don't think Jacob is on this evening. I think okay. he's stuck at work. So <laughs> we're good then. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And you can find the link to the um, zoning committee meeting on mpuy.org. Next we'll have up is our park beltline and environmental. That is Dr. Rebecca Robinson. Hey, good evening. Nothing to report today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next will be from, do we have Lakewood Oversight? Yolanda Cameron. Uh, you are still muted. Muted, yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, nothing to report today. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have anybody from Liquid Finance? All right. Move on to. Um, this is <laughs> Kanika Greenlee. Uh, nothing to report. We meet tomorrow to review um, the the uh, grant submissions. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, next, we'll move on to is our APAP. Uh, absolutely nothing to report other than, as I stated last month, we're in major reformation of our bylaws. We have elections this Saturday. Uh, we have eliminated four officer positions, and we're trying to be all that we can be. We essentially are a policy-driven uh, entity that advises the city. We are collectively 25 MPUs, all bringing the various issues as each, as each MPU has very uniqueness to its to its people, to its its all of the issues of inter infrastructure that affects that individual NPU. So what we're, we're, I guess if I can say anything, I'm gonna bring back to the table the one item that I have worked on as a part of the transportation committee, and that is a resolution. It's really a recommendation to APAB that we forward to the city that speaks to the impediment created by the train tracks right along Sawtell and other uh, areas of the community that impede the flow of traffic, that uh, really has created more of a nuisance. My understanding is because um, Norfolk and those tracks basically uh, are part of what's considered interstate commerce. There is less we can do per se other than regulate directly at the crossing itself. My understanding that is what we're learning and hearing that the city itself has jurisdiction at the crossing and is at the crossing maybe that we can fashion a remedy that would kind of um, eliminate what has become a nuisance, not only in our community, which is uh, essentially Lakewood, I believe it flows through other components, other parts of, um, of MPUI, but certainly in the Northwestern quarter, that's where the loudest voices have been in helping draft this resolution. So as soon as we are we have it complete, I will send it, I will bring it back to show what we're putting before council. We're recommending uh, that APAP places this resolution before council. It is one of many resolutions that we have that we have uh, drafted this year. Not all make it anywhere, but we believe this one has the teeth of many people saying enough is enough. So that's probably the biggest, um, I think uh, the greatest work we've done in this past 12 months. Thank you. Um, and do you know the best way for uh, people to um, call or to report if there is a train that is sitting on the tracks cross that is blocking a road uh, for an extensive period of time? Mm, I would dare say DOT or ATL DOT, ATL dot or uh, I would say I would say both of them. It's bureaucracy and it's kind of hard to um, you know, get to to real meaningful change because this isn't the first complaints. We're not the first to complain. This the complaints have risen over time as the population has increased. More people are using that thoroughfare, at least in Lakewood, that takes you to the east side of the city. But I, I will get back with that information because uh, the transportation um, the, the transportation committee at APAP has kind of booted up. It's uh, just again all of the issues from uh, Vision Zero to um, the um, so so I, I there's I I currently co-chair with um, with um, uh, Rich Taylor 
but both of us are new. We've only been appointed in the last three months. And uh, so a lot of what we're doing is kind of winging it until we get more training and more insight into some of the commissioner. I think Commissioner Kevin is. Yeah, so there you are. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so for now, um, just make sure that if you do see that a railroad is track is uh, stopped and it is blocking traffic for extent of time, just take note of it. So that way we can make sure that um, if this ordinance is going to be pushed for that we have enough information uh, to share with the appropriate personnel. Um, last uh, committee is going to be our previous um, ad hoc for special projects uh, chair, um, Alir Lofton. You are still muted at the time. Hey, I have nothing to report. We closed out the IG, so we're done for uh, last year. Perfect. Closed out is great. All right. Now that all of our committee reports are completed, do we have any questions from the general body to any of our committees? And as I see no hands raised, we'll go ahead and move on. Thank you so much to all the hard work that our committees do throughout the year. Um, it is a thankless job, and so we do thank you. Uh, next on our report is going to be our voting matters. Uh, let me go ahead and share the agenda on the screen again for everybody, just so you can see what we are looking at. <clears throat> uh, so as we go to our voting matters, we're going to go down. And we have first up is V23153. This is one, 1631 Burton Street Southeast. This is for a variance. Uh, do I have a representative on the call? Is there anybody on the call to represent V23-153 off of Burton? I'm sorry, can you hear, can you hear me now? I have yes, I can hear you now. Hi, okay. So I'm here uh, again with the variant for 1631 Burton Street. So with this one, the last time that I was on, um, on the call, I was asked to have a representative from STS uh, present, as well as um, I was asked to reach out to the neighbor directly behind um, the property. I did do that. We sent over a certified uh, letter in explaining the variance and also asked that they reach out to us or even um, included the um, uh, date and time of your NPU if they would have liked to attend. I have not heard anything back in the reference to that. Um, however, the variance is we're seeking a variance to reduce the front yard um, setback from 35 feet to 15, and then the variance um, to reduce both side yards from 7 feet to 0 feet. And we're seeking um, to reduce the rear yard, which is where the neighbor um, neighboring house is, um, to reduce uh, that rear yard from 15 to 8 feet. Um, we did have FCS. I think believe Steve is on, and um, it was passed at the uh, neighborhood meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody in the neighborhood of South Atlanta that would like to speak on that behalf? As I see none on here, um, would our- It was on a little earlier this, uh, at the beginning of the call. I'm not sure if we lost him. Possibly with the, the with everybody getting kicked off. <laughs> uh, do we have any uh, comments from our planning committee on this? All right, before we move to any additional comments or questions, um, I did have one question about this that had been raised multiple times about the zero uh, setback and whether or not you would open to change it to a minimum of uh, four and a half feet. Uh, this is typically standard uh, to be asked this due to fire and safety being able to come between lots. If you go to a zero lot line, um, you do inhibit any sort of fire rescue being able to access the rear lot of the yard. 
So we're not able to make any changes in order, according to uh, the plans um, that are there, in order to build on this lot for FCS to be able to build these um, variances and setbacks that are in place are the only ones that are allowable in order for them to build a, a home there. So you must go to a zero lot. And, right, right. And um, as far as um, safety with uh, the concern of, um, um, say fire trucks or anything needing to get in, they wouldn't, um, it wouldn't affect them because the back of this property um, where the house is built is, would actually be in the back of another home. Okay, so you're talking about right here. If we can look on, the, if everybody's able to see on the screen where this is. Mm hmm all right. Uh, do I have any other questions? Uh, Gloria Hawkins, Wayne, you have your. Well, excuse me, uh, Chairperson. Um, I didn't get the name of the person. I'm trying to take notes. Who is responding here? What is that person? My apologies. I'm sorry. I was in such a rush to speak. I'm, I'm so sorry. My name is Lakita, and that's L A K E T A. Well, can you put that in the chat? She's sure. on the call, um, but if you want to spell it out real quick, I'll spell it K. Yeah, and how can, so I can describe Whitaker. this. Did anyone from the community speak on this? They are not um, all at the time. Um, we did ask to see if anybody from South Atlanta would like to uh, speak on the matter. Right, so no one spoke. Then I assume... Um, the person who spoke was speaking on behalf of the um, applicant. Is that correct? Yes, Paul. The person is speaking yes. on behalf of the applicant. All right. So, could you put your your um, information in the chat so I can put it in the minutes? Yes, I did include it there. My name, uh, okay. Fortis Homes, is the builder, and my email address uh, is included as well. All right. Thank you, Paul. And please raise your hand uh, next time so that way we can uh, make sure not to cut off another person. I appreciate it. Uh, Gloria Hawkins, when you have the floor. Yeah, I just kind of want to reiterate what you stated. Uh, 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 Fort, I guess Fortis Homes is the group. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're saying that South Atlanta approved this, uh, this variance that took the uh, variance from seven feet to zero feet. I think I hear what Nicole is saying. It just doesn't seem reasonable. It doesn't seem reasonable that there is no, there's no distance between the adjacent lot and the structure that's being built for whatever reason, whether it's security for folks needing to get, it, it, I, I'm surprised that you all are unwilling to even consider at least a three feet variance, which is what I think half of what is required. I, yes. We have to do so we have to do what is allowed to make it a buildable lot for a property. And yes, ma'am, it was approved with uh, the neighborhood. Um, I did receive the information back from um, Steve and Ms. Cynthia at uh, FCS, Focus Community Strategy. I guess when I hear you say what is allowed, what if this body feels like it's unreasonable? How does that affect you? How does it affect me if the body feels that it's unreasonable? That it's unreasonable well, to have a zero lot line, that there is no distance between the, that, the lot line and the structure of the adjacent. Uh, yeah, that's the question. So, so the backyard of their property is, it's their yard. It's not directly adjacent to where their home is. It's more of an empty space. Um, or their empty yard. It is close, but it's not where we're impeding into their property. It's still on the property that FCS, the lot that FCS uh, currently has, this property at um, uh, 1631 Burton. So I'm here, the structure isn't directly adjacent to that lot line. There's a distance between the structure and the adjacent lot line. Is that what you're saying? 
I'm sorry, repeat that for me. Nicole, is that what you're saying that there's distance between the structure and the adjacent lot line that abuts this variance? Yeah, so what if you can look on the screen, you can see that there is um, what they're talking about is that the lot is abutting against an, the backyard of another lot, not against another house. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. However, okay. So if you look at your lots here, you ha would have a home here. This is their proposed home and then a home mm -hmm. here. This lot actually runs north mm -hmm. uh, to a street up here. So this is a backyard. Um, however, there's still the concern that if for some reason they, you know, public safety does need to get back there, they're unable to utilize if this um, property was to build up against the zero lot line. Um, typically when uh, talking with BZAs, uh, you know, most variances do ask that we do um, a small setback just so that way both lots have a little bit of space so that public safety could get through if there was ever a case of emergency. Um, it's not a requirement. However, it is a, a very special um, a, approval that the BCA board would do. Are there any other questions at this time? So we are able to move forward with a vote on the matter if we choose to. Um, with this, I do like to make a note though that uh, you are able to do a conditional vote or conditional approval or conditional denial. Um, if there is a condition to approve that the setback be adjusted, um, it's a recommendation that would go to the BZA board as they make their um, notion to either approve, amend it, or um, request any changes from the applicant. Bob Morris, you have the floor. Okay, it's Suzanne. Sorry, I'm on Bob's uh, computer. Okay, does anybody know what the minimum requirement is for fire safety between the two lots? Seven feet, what? Um, I believe it's a seven foot between the two lots, um, which is why we always ask for three and a half. Um, right. Four and a half is preferred, but uh, three and a half, I always thought was your minimum. Minimum. Yes. Okay. And what do we, what, what would there be now? No, Currently, Currently she is asked, the applicant is asking for uh, both of the side yards to be reduced from a seven foot to a zero foot and a three. Um, nope. To zero. So, so half a foot shy on one side and three feet, three and a half feet shy on the other. Is that correct? Uh, to the minimum, if we're looking right. at the minimum. Three and a half feet minimum on each side would be um, for fire and safety. Okay, and um, it wasn't clear. Uh, you have uh, the applicant has gotten a variance agreement from the neighbor that they're okay with the fire truck not getting through. <laughs> we'll let the so no, so that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. So I we were asked for. Power. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Lakita. So what I was asked. What was asked of me at the last meeting was that I reached out to the neighbor and informed them of the property and what we were doing. Um, also asked that someone from uh, FCS, Focus Community Treasury, would attend the um, neighborhood meeting. And so with that, we did send over a letter. I sent over a certified letter to that um, owner. And I also went over and left uh, a note there at the property. No one returned um, any calls or sent anything back um, to me in reference to that. Okay, so got it. So the the next door neighbors don't, they've been um, sent notice, but we don't know if they've taken notice, so to speak. Sorry for the pun. We don't know if they understand or were there or, or received it or read it. Well, I don't know if they read it. I know it was certified. I also sent the details for tonight's meeting to attend. I uh, also included FCS information, um, my contact information, and also James Cheek's uh, information as well. So they had multiple, um, would have multiple ways to contact us. Okay. And, and you're saying the neighborhood approved? I'm sorry? And knowing uh, and the neighborhood, when it was presented to the neighborhood, the neighborhood felt comfortable with that. It, they approved it. Yes, yes, ma'am. The neighborhood approved. No, I have. This is Melody. Can I chime in? Yes. Uh, is that okay, uh, Suzanne? 
Yeah, I've, I've just asked the question, so I'm I'm thankful for any information. That's fine. Yep, Melody Ford, you have more. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Devon Dixon, who's the president of, of the Civic League, is has transitioned to New Mexico. I have a text from him um, as I contacted him while y'all were chatting. He states, if this is the house uh, at the intersection of Burton and Murray, they approved the first variant. Of three feet? Half with, no, I'm it, sorry? Of three feet, is that the first variant, three feet? Just trying to ask him. The first variance is a front yard setback of 35 feet to 15. Okay. The second. Okay, so he said, uh, he said the second is contingent on reducing the half width of Murray side only, not the Bolton side. And that is your side yard setbacks out of seven feet to zero feet. And then there's a third variance for the rear yard. So Madam Chair, is the zero feet, the one they, they did not approve or was conditioned that they make it three and a half feet? Is that what I'm hearing? Correct, so it's a oh. half yard. A half. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I Those aren't the details that I was given from the uh, re city reviewer. We do not have a city reviewer for our- No, 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 we, we do as a builder, when we send over the application, they're the ones that let us know, hey, you can move forward and go to your next meeting or uh, which would be your MPU, or if they would tell us like, no, don't, don't go basically. And so she's the one that reached out to me and said, hey, it was approved we need to for you to make sure because this is the second time around that you have had to go to the NPU before the NPU for the DBA. But worst case scenario, what can what can happen here is that the second portion of the variance, as you see on the plans, it allows for the property to be there. Um, with the 35 feet set back to the 15 feet. And I'll pull those plans back of uh, that actual image for everybody. So what we're talking about here is this is the front yard setback that faces Burton um, and where, that's where the front porch is. So front porches are allowed to be within your setback as long as they don't right. push more than 10 feet. Um, so right now what they're asking is that this be moved to the 15 foot, which is what they have listed on here instead of a 35 foot, uh, 35 feet on a 50 foot um, with length um, house would not, or lot would not give enough space to build. Uh, the difference that they ask was also for the side setbacks uh, to be reduced from zero to, or from seven to zero. Now on this plan where they have a proposed build does show a seven foot setback on each side. Um, so as long as this proposed build does stay as it exists, um, then they would not be building within that. However, if there is a variance that is approved to go to a zero lot um, setback, that would allow for them to change the site plan. The additional um, plan um, variance was for the rigor setback, and it was to change to an eight foot from a 15. And as you can see, they're not protruding within that space either. So the only question thing in question right now from the neighborhood to here is whether or not uh, that seven foot setback um, was approved by the neighborhood or not um, from the understanding from the previous chair. Um, they did not approve it as a full set, zero setback, that it was reduced setback, but not to a zero. Mm. Uh, Melody, okay. Yeah. What do you have that as, what do you have that is reduced to? Uh, so the mean? Melody Ford had responded back that the prior chair had stated it was to reduce to a half setback. Um, so that would, right. be, that would be four and a, uh, three and a half feet. So right. asking from seven to zero, that would be three and a half feet on each side. Question. Um, uh, when you say fifth, I don't understand the 15 feet. I understand that the front of the house to the street or what the city owns is 35 feet. They do have an, an exemption. If you put on a porch, uh, the, there's no, there's no, they, they permit a porch. I think they have a specification 10 by 12 or whatever. What is the 15 feet that they want the porch to extend to 15 feet? I, I don't think they need permission for that. Or am I not understanding? I'm just trying to understand. 
Yeah, let me kind of explain the setbacks on here. So setbacks for any lot that is a single family residential or other build, the setback is an unbuildable space. Now there are conditions through the city of what you are allowed to build within your setback. For example, driveways and, so and sidewalks are allowed as well as uh, any sort of landscaping are allowed within your setback space. You're not allowed to build a, a structure within your setback. Um, however, as uh, Ms. Morris, as Ms. Otis had uh, stated, the front porch does have stipulations. So as long as the front porch does not extend into the front setback, where it's sitting right now, it's within the front setback. So it's from the front property line to the setback line. It's allowed to extend into that front setback by 10 feet. Um, and that does allow homes to sit a little bit closer to the road and give a little more space for that buildable space. If we're looking at this drawing and if they were to build as this drawing displays, they are not building within their setbacks. They are building the front porch appropriately per code and all of their setbacks are side is seven. So they're not building onto that zero line. Um, does that answer your question, Suzanne? So they're so they on, the only issue, the porch is, doesn't matter how wide it is. It's just how far it is from the sidewalk. They're fine, but it's just a question of how much setback on the side are they required to hold? Uh, yeah, so that that seems to be what's in question. Um, they are not they're not required to hold any specific setback if they get a variance approved. Um, right. At this time, they're asking for a zero setback, um, and of course, the community seems to have a pushback on that. And um, the community, just so, to reconfirm, so I understand. I'm sorry about that, Madam Chair. May I I move for conditional yeah. approval? So, uh, yes. So what I I did want to excuse me for one uh, moment. I did just check this. So what I'm told is the side yard, the side variance will not be changed. They are not asking for the side um, setbacks to be changed. So they are only asking for the front setback to be 15 feet and the rear setback to be eight feet. Yes. Thank you. Um, let's just- uh, My apologies for that. That's okay. Just make sure that there's no other question from Suzanne and then Gloria, I'll give you the floor. Okay, yeah, no, I understand now. I was confused, but uh, thank you for that clarification. That makes more sense. That that makes me understand what they're asking. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gloria. You can have four. I'm not sure if I understand. Is it? Did I just hear there's no longer a request for a zero uh, uh, zero setback? Yes. So they okay. are only asking for the change of setback for the front and rear setback. The side setbacks will now stay a zero a seven foot setback. So what is the application? Is that consistent with what the application is asking? Uh, the variances within the application show both. So I would recommend if we are to make a motion to approve that you say you're motioning for the first and third variance. That's right. Condition condition upon, uh, I'm not sure. What did you just say? Uh, condition upon there not being a zero set, uh, that the variance does not now eliminate that seven foot setback. That's That's what I think. It creates the biggest unreasonableness in this. Yeah, so I'll 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 word that again for you. So if you want to make the motion um, that it would be approval of the variance request for variances one and three to exclude variance two for reduced side setbacks. Is that what you understand, Ms. Whitaker? Yes. Mm. That, <clears throat> well, go ahead. The, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is uh this is Steve. I'm with FCS Ministry. Sorry, it took me so long to jump in. I was having some trouble hearing on my uh, computer. But yeah, it, it looks like there's, if you could scroll back up and let us take a look at that application. It, it looks like, uh, okay, I'm going to take a picture of that. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be that there was, um, for the side setbacks, we were requesting zero change, um, but it looks like the, the language got flipped around and they're saying we're reducing the side setbacks from seven feet to zero, mm -hmm. but the, the language is just flipped around. That site drawing that you saw down a little bit lower, um, there, there's plenty of width on the lot to do what we need to do without adjusting the setbacks. It's just the front and the back. You can see that lot is about 50 feet deep. 
And when you have a 35 foot setback in the front, which is typical, and a 15 in the back, when you combine those, you end up with actually overlapping setbacks, which gives you zero buildable space. So we're just looking to shrink the front and the back or the setbacks, push them, push them open so we can fit a house there in the middle. But the side setbacks, uh, there was no intention to ever change those. It looks like the application has an error. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and uh, make the motion just to make it clear on here if everybody's ready for a motion. Yes. All right. Yes. So we will motion to approve application B23 153 with the exclusion of no side setback reduction. Yes. May I have a second? Can you repeat that motion again? We motion to approve B23 B53 with the exclusion of no reduced side setback. So there will be a no. Second. Yes. All right. With a second from Melody Ford. Again, I'll repeat that as I launch our poll. So this is an approval for the application. However, there will be no side setback reduction. So the front setback will be reduced and the rear setback will be reduced as displayed on the screen. So the poll is up. Please remember that our voting rules uh, do require you to be an MPUI recognized residential constituent, 18 years or older with your place of residence within the MPUI boundaries or an MPUI business constituent, which you are allowed one person to represent your business. Uh, please make sure that you have any additional votes for any members that are also on your call that they vote in the chat um, or that our co-chair also must vote in the chat. Yes. If you are on your phone and unable to vote, uh, you may unmute yourself or vote in the chat. So, and again, I'll repeat this, that we are approving the application with the two variances. That is your variance for your front yard setback, set number one, which is from 35 feet to 15 feet, and with the variance reduction of a rear yard setback from 15 feet to 8 feet. There will be no side yard setback reduction. All right, keep it open for just 10 more seconds, guys. All right, we will end the poll. So the polling results as of right now are 17 yes, zero no, and one abstention. That does include two votes that are in the chat as yes. You can see on the screen the polling results, and there are two chats of yes. So the motion carries. Thank you so much for the clarity on your application. Uh, we'll make sure that we make a note on that when we do send it in to, uh, for our recommendation. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you so much. All right. So next up is going to be, give me one second. Let me pull up the agenda again. It's going to be V23-180. This is for 46 Bisbee Avenue. Do I have a representative on the call? Yes, you do. I'm here, Wayne Gaskin. All right, you may have the floor. If you'd like to uh, share your screen, please do. We do like to have a visual representation of the application. No problem. Thank you. And I'll see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So 46 Bisbee, and we are asking for two variances. The first one is a front yard setback variance from 35 feet to approximately 15 feet, 10 inches. Um, we just want to increase the kind of the, the height of the existing non-conforming structure is the roof. The previous roof um, was damaged and torn off, and we're going to rebuild it back, but with a higher pitch than um, what was original. Um, and in order for us to do that, we had to have the variance because the house as it is actually sits in the setback. So this variance will allow us to um, make our roof 
uh, align with the current structure. So we're not adding any square footage to the main house. Um, we are just, we're just basically adding a new roof on and just making it a higher pitched roof in the front. Thank you. Are you able to scroll down to show the um, display of the lot as well? Should be one of the last pages on your application. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't think I have that whole application. My, my, uh, <laughs> my particular project went through a lot of back and forth and rigmarole trying to get on the schedule, but I do have a, uh, a site plan um, of what what's happening. Oops, there we go. So let me zoom in a little bit. This is the front setback here. So the current house sits inside of our setback by this much, nearly half of the house. I guess it's probably about a third of the house um, sits in the setback. Um, so our variance is basically just so that we can um, we can take from here all the way back and just build a new roof over the over the top of the house. Thank you. Are there any questions? Or sorry, let me bring this to our neighborhood. I know that Devon is not here, um, so I'll ask Melody Ford if you have any information from Devon Dixon on this application if it did go through the neighborhood. Yeah, he said the forty-six went through. Yes. Okay, was approved by the community. Uh, Bob Morris, do you have any comments or suggestions from our zoning committee? Uh, as I recall, the zoning the zoning committee also looked at this and felt comfortable with the uh, uh, with the setbacks that were proposed. Thank you so much. I'll now open the floor to any questions from the general body for the applicant. I will. Also... Sorry, this is Paul McMurray again, butting in, but trying to keep the minutes. It's hard to follow all this. Um, did did Mel say the community approved this? Yes, she did. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll chime in. He said there was two variance requests. The first one was approved. The second one, half depth, was approved on Murray only because it wasn't paved. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Um, Dr. Oh. Sorry. So those, there is only one variance on this. So that is that is exactly what they're well, asking. Well, there's two variances. Okay. So the second variance is is what Melody uh, spoke to as far as um, the half depth setback, uh, because what's going on is that street, not only is it not paved, it, it's, it's like almost part of the park. Um, and it's just like a sidewalk that goes back to Carver High School. So it's likely that it will ever be uh, paved, um, but it shows up as a street on the GIS and and on the um, surveys. Uh, so we just wanted to reduce that to a kind of the standard seven feet setback, so that we can um, build our ADU there and and not have to um, go too too far into the property. Okay, uh, I do have Gloria Hawkins. When you have the floor, what? Did Melody say was not approved? You said both were approved. Yeah, you see number two where it says applicants seek, seeks variance to reduce the half depth. Uh huh. That's that's because it wasn't paved. So you're saying it that portion of the application was not approved? Is that what I'm hearing? That's the way I understood it. Um, but it's it's right there on the um under scope of work. So aren't, aren't we on the same page? We, yes, we are, but I was hearing something different from the from the applicant. So to clarify you. for you guys, um, the reason why the setback for the left side of the lot, which is on Murray Street, mm -hmm. um, which is an unpaved road, is a 17.5 is because it's technically a corner lot then. Um, so it has two as a front yard and one of the side yards is kind of halfway between front yard and side yard. So they would still have then if this is approved on Murray Street, which is line two. Uh, they would have two side yard setbacks to seven feet. So it, based on the um, proposal that's on the screen, it would be an approval for both variances from what Melody had stated. Uh, Gloria Hawkins, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, not at all. It's not clear still, but I, I'll acquiesce to the majority. Um, here, let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen for you guys um, just to show 
what we are looking at for this application and try to explain this a little bit clearer for you. Because I do want to make sure everybody has a full understanding of what they are asking. So the variance that has been requested is for the front yard here. This is a 35 foot yard setback. They are asking to reduce back to this line here where the property sits. Um, that would be your first variance, which was approved by the neighborhood. The second variance is for their side setback for, on Murray Street to be reduced to seven feet where it's sitting now from a 17.5. The reason being is that because this is shown as an unopened street in the city ordinance that requires a 17.5 setback. Their right side of the yard is a seven foot setback already. And so there is no change to that setback. Okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, do I have a motion on this application? So uh, move that we that the body approves the variances as cited in application number, whatever that application is, that the body supports uh, the approval of those variances before the B BZA. Okay, so the motion is to, the question is to approve V23-180, both their variances. Do I have a second? Second, second. Rebecca. All right. With a second, we'll go ahead and carry forward with the motion. Um, let me bring that poll up. All right. So the poll is launched. Again, this is a motion to approve both variances for V23-180. Mm -hmm. Both variances were approved by the neighborhood via the front yard setback and the side yard, which abuts Murray Street. Noted. All right, thank you. Note mine in the chat, um, Nicole. I will. All right, thank you all. Good night. Um, the motion has not carried yet, so I would hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I misheard. I thought That's you said okay. it was. We are still in the voting process. All right, so we'll leave it open for just a couple more seconds here. I do have only one vote in the chat. Um, Gloria, if you can make sure to put yours in the chat. Mm, I thought it was. Mm. I don't, you may not have pushed send. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, we will be closing the chat. Is everybody in? All right, I am closing the chat or the vote. Mm -hmm. So the vote carries at 15 yes zero no and zero abstention that includes two in the chat so the motion carries thank you so much wayne for being on the call i appreciate it no problem thank you guys everybody have a good night and good rest of your week mm -hmm. all right next up is v23 195 this is at 100 park avenue this is also for reduced setback uh, do we have an applicant on the call mm -hmm. Again, this is for V23-195. This is at 100 Park Avenue. All right, as we do not have them on the call, uh, we will go ahead and defer them. Um, I will do a unanimous uh, motion for this. Uh, my motion to defer V23-195 as they are not in the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any in opposition? None. Quick question, Madam Chair. Did was they there a second on that? Yes, there was by Rebecca Robinson. Quick question, Madam Chair. Yes. Did they ever go before uh, the community of South Atlanta? Not that I'm aware of. Melody, does, Melody, do you know if they ever appeared before South Atlanta? Not that I recall. I'm trying to get that confirmed right now through the bond. Give me a minute. But yep. nonetheless, I think there's a decision to defer because they're not president anyway. Yeah, if we can I, carry. I want to say this is their second time defer, correct? This is their first. Let's carry with the motion. For real quick, right. it has been seconded in, in his question. Um, so if there are any in opposition to deferring the applicant. Mm -hmm. All right, as I hear none, the applicant is deferred. Um, just to answer those questions, just sorry, when, when there's a question on that's already been motioned and pushed forward, we do have to carry the question. 
Um, so with this application, we were informed of this only once the agenda was released. Uh, we were not informed prior, so most likely they did not have enough notice to meet with the community. Um, so I'm hoping that they will be on our next month's agenda, already met with the community as well. Excuse me, uh, Nicole, Devon said they did not present to us, so... Yep. Yeah, they did. We did not make um, this information uh, okay. until it was very late. So I'm assumed that they they did not have their their meeting set either. Thank you for that. Right. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to ask again, but I'm trying to desperately put the stuff down, but we keep rushing ahead. Now, what we're saying here is we're you're making the motion to defer. Motion has already carried to defer. So, so what was the vote on that? It was a unanimous. Um, okay. We did a uh, acclamation. Yes. So, did we have a a? I motioned. You motioned. Rebecca, who seconded? Rebecca Robinson second. Nobody um, opposed. And Paul, I can help you with the minutes after the meeting if we need to. Okay. Pardon. And I can help with any of these questions after the meeting as well. If we need to clarify any additions. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so moving to the next item, uh, we do have on here, which is just for comment and question. We will be voting on this next month. Um, this is for a, um, a new ordinance that will be taking place. I'm gonna switch my screens to the ordinance so you can read what this is. Uh, this is for an amendment. It's for these smaller single family homes. Uh, this is not specific to EDUs, but more specific to tiny homes. This would allow for tiny homes to be built on structures. Um, however, if they, it does make it so that they do have to go through a proper procedure instead of just building a minimum of 70, 750 square foot home as their principal use. <clears throat> So with this amendment, um, it's a special use permit that would be required if you are to have one or more detached single family dwelling as the principal use or and or structure. And of course, again, this is specific to 750 feet or smaller. This goes and carries forth on all our um, properties as well as PDHs. I'd like to ask if there are any questions about what this means before we move to the next item. Again, we will not be voting on this this month. This is something that we are discussing. We'll discuss again at our zoning committee meeting. So if anybody has questions um, that are not answered during this meeting, we can also clarify them there. Gloria hawkins Wynn, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. I think the conversation that came up in the zoning meeting was how many of these 750 square tiny houses could actually be placed on a lot if it if the totality does not surpass the FRA. What was what was the answer to that question? Is that a non-issue in all of this? You so what it is is it allows you to build as many as you like as long as you do not exceed the FAR, which is your floor area ratio. So on an R4 lot, which is a 9,000 square foot lot, supposedly, um, you would be allowed to build 50% of that lot as covered. Um, now, if even though you are building more than one unit of a smaller single family detached home, you cannot go over what would traditionally be allowed to build on that R4 lot. So essentially there could be multiple small uh, what do you call it, small houses on one single R4 lot. Is that correct? Correct. You're allowing multiple smaller, but not to exceed its density that is already in its zoning. Hmm. And that. And what does this legislation ask specific to that? What is the cut through the chase? It's allowing for the principal use to be multiple smaller homes versus uh, what an ADU would allow, which is for a principal use of a main home and then one smaller home. Um, so if you were to build multiple small detached homes on a lot, the main house would have to be a certain size for you to be able to build an ADU. Mm. So this is allowing to increase density in a way of multiple homes, but not by volume. It's also allowing for those traditional R lots to have more than one home on the lot. 
Um, this is giving for people having opportunity of more affordable housing. And for those that already own the home and already live on the, the lot to um, bring in additional rental in income. Are there any questions on the matter? I would just say it's a significant change. Um, it's a significant, it really changes the definition of R4, doesn't it? It changes so that it allows for multifamily in a sense of multiple homes, but not um, attached. So no duplexes still, no multi-level apartment buildings. It's just simply allowing you um, kind of like a subdivision of a lot to build multiple homes without actually dividing the lot. Yeah. All right, any other questions at this time? All right, as I see them, we'll go ahead and move forward. Let me push the agenda back up. All right, next up, we will be moving on to our presentations, which we have none. Um, we also have no old business, uh, but we will be moving on to some new business. First up is our vote for ad hoc for special projects nomination nominees. Um, the ad hoc for special projects traditionally handles our CIG application, which is our community impact grant. Uh, that grant we are allowed to use throughout the community for a special projects for beautification, um, as well as any other special ad hoc projects that we may come up with. Typically, the community does not come up with any additional as um, our ad hoc project, or sorry, our CIG project is usually enough for us to handle. <laughs> um, currently, do we have any additional, any nominations that would like to come from the floor? All right, I do have a nomination for Melody Ford. Melody, do you accept the nomination? I accept and come on, help me out. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, now we do, when we do have a committee like this, uh, that would be that one person is the committee chair and that there is a whole group of other committee members that are able to assist. So uh, with no other nominations from the floor, we'll go ahead and move to a vote. Um, I would like to put the motion forward to motion to approve Melody Ford as the nominations committee, or sorry, as the ad hoc for special projects committee chair. Madam Chair, Gloria, second. All right, let me just go ahead and launch this. Mm -hmm. Paul, is his hand raised? Paul, you have the floor. Yes. Um, you know, I read the case for this and everything, but there's just not enough here that can tell me What's a use case? What situation would happen where this uh, ordinance would be invoked? Um, are you talking about the prior ordinance, Paul? Yeah. If we can say finish with this um, uh, agenda item, because we've already. Uh, no, I, got, I had to go to the bathroom, so. We can go back to it. Um, just let's finish with this ordinance because we have a motion on the floor, okay? Or with this vote. Uh, so the vote. Um, I do have a second from Gloria Hawkins, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So the motion on the floor is to approve, uh, ratify Melody Ford as the ad hoc for special projects chairperson. Let me just launch this. Mm -hmm. um, and why is it not launching? Give me one moment, guys. And it says it has already been launched for some reason. Uh, what we will do, is there any in opposition for Melody Ford being nominated, being voted in and ratified as the ad hoc for special projects chair? All right, with none in opposition, the motion carries. Melody Ford, thank you so much for taking on the role. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. And if anybody would like to assist her with any of these projects, we are going to go over some of those projects here shortly. Um, but we would like to have some more members of the community that assist the ad hoc for special projects, especially when it comes to our CIG grant. Um, next on the agenda, there are some additional subcommittees that we will be looking for. Um, our Transportation Committee, Education, Communication, and Lakewood Finance. So we do have quite a few um, subcommittees that are open. So we do ask that if you would like to be part of those subcommittees or if you would like to nominate somebody, please let us know. All right, next up on the agenda is we will be talking about voting today about whether or not to move our MPUY general body meetings from the third Monday to the third Tuesday. This is a request that has been made from DCP, the Department of City Planning. The reason for this is that every single weekday of the, the week, there is an MPU meeting or a city meeting for which DCP has to attend. By moving this meeting from Mondays to Tuesdays, this would allow for one day of the week for DCP to have free for community engagement. As we know, this year is the 50th anniversary for MPU's organization, and so they are looking to be able to host additional um, community engagement that is not just for the MPUs, but for all members of the city. So the, what is being asked of us is to move our meetings from the third Monday to the third Tuesday. I'm going to open the floor for questions. Do we have any questions about this or open discussion? Alir Lofton, you have the floor. Yes, yeah, same time, 7 p.m.? Yes, it would be. It would still be 7 p.m. This way, everybody can get off work, get home. We're not rushing through traffic. Do we have any other questions or discussion about this? All right, as I see none, what I, I would like to ask if there is a motion on the floor. Motion to move the monthly MPUI meetings to the third Tuesday of the month. All right, do I have a second? Second, Melody. All right, so the motion on the floor is to move our monthly meetings from the, the third Tuesday to the third Wednesday. Or sorry, third Monday to the third Tuesday. I apologize. Motion on the floor is to move our monthly meetings from the third Monday to the third Tuesday. Um, and I'm still not able to launch polls for some reason. Give me one moment. I'm just making a whole new poll for us. So give me one moment, everybody. Okay, Nicole, do you see the question in the chat? Um, do you not yet? So the change of this would be coming to effect on uh, in, in March. Now, next month, because of President's Day, it's already moved to the second, uh, or sorry, to the third Tuesday. So it would essentially hand over from now on. I'm sure I think there's an issue of our bylaws being changed consistent with it as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so we have already spoke with uh, DCP and they will amend our bylaws accordingly. Uh, they actually hope that we would have been able to vote on this already, but with voting matters for our officers, it became a, a very long process. And so we chose to delay this vote. But I think the bylaws also allow, this is one of the exceptions to it's one of those where we make the decision 30 days and 30 days later, it becomes effective. Not all of our bylaws yield to that um, 
yield as such. Uh, I think typically we submit them in September and they don't become effective until January. But this is one of the exceptions when it can become immediately uh, applied. It's the exception is the time and place of the meetings can be correct. changed. Yeah. Yep, you are correct. Um, so unfortunately the poll is not working at this time because it's um, airing saying that it's already been launched. Um, so we will go ahead and do a standard vote um, so I will have anybody that is in opposition to uh, changing our monthly meetings from the third Monday to the third Tuesday. Please raise your hand. So this is if you are denying the motion. All right, I see no hand raise. That means the unanimous vote has been approved. So we have carried over the motion to approve that our monthly meetings will be changed from the third Monday to the third Tuesday. With next month already being moved due to a holiday, it will take official effect in March. All right, next up on our agenda items. Uh, we will move over to our announcements. Uh, so as I stated, our February meeting is has been moved. Um, that is due to the holiday. So everybody is able to get a three-day weekend. Um, we do appreciate everybody taking their time to, for these meetings. So we want to make sure that you also get time to enjoy when there is a holiday. Um, next on our agenda is our for our announcements is our public safety committee meeting, which we have spoke about. It is on January 24th, and that will be at 7 p.m. So please be there if you want to discuss any community concerns about our public safety. We should have our um, APD officers on there, our council members and their representatives, as well as the solicitor's office on there. And code uh, enforcement, code enforcement as yes. well. Code enforcement as well, correct. Mm -hmm. um, next up is about our next CIG application. Uh, with Melody Ford being our new ad hoc for a special project, she will be assisting with this uh, next month. We have already come up with a couple ideas as to what we could uh, vote on the matter. So we're going to discuss that. Um, let me just get the right screen up as I closed everything out. Uh, so the few items that we came up with this year, um, we did have on there for mural light boxes last year. So we are carrying that over. Those are for the electrical boxes that are in the neighborhood. The proposal would be to paint a minimum of one per neighborhood um, in hopes that we would also be able to utilize some of our high school or college students so that we would be able to reduce funds on that. There is also the application of mural of a street art. Um, as you know, some of our neighborhoods have street art that is actually painting the middle of a cross road. So we were looking at doing some sort of mural in that fashion. There is the also of doing a community outreach, which would include additional mailers. We would be doing mailers throughout all of MPU and with the funds, we would be able to do them more than once for every single resident within the neighborhood. Do I have any uh, suggestions for any additional items that we may vote on next month in February? All right, I see no other information in the chat or any raised hands about options for our CIG application. There is also doing Unity Day again. I will put that on the list. Um, I believe that doing Unity Day again would be a great way to unite our community. And maybe we can um, change how that would, um, how we would handle that this year. Um, and now that we've learned more about how to host events like this. Thank you, Alir. I know it was a, a great success last year. Yeah. All right, any other um, recommendations for our CIG application, which we will be voting on next month? All right, as I hear none. So with the CIG application, we will do a full presentation next month and vote on them so that the application can be submitted in time. Uh, there will be no chance to defer this until March because it does have to be submitted prior to our MPUI meeting in March. 
right? With that being my last announcement, are there any other announcements from the general body? Please raise your hand. All right, Paul, I know you did have a question about one of the items. Would you like to raise that question at this time? Well, can you tell me what the vote was? Uh, it was you, there was no vote on the- um, There was no vote? You're talking about the um, ordinance for tiny homes? Right. We did not vote on the matter that votes next month. It was just an announcement. Okay. All right, with no other announcements or hands raised, I will hand this over to our city planner. You now have the floor. Oh, I do not see Elizabeth Clapton on here anymore. All right, she may have been kicked off in some of the process, so we'll make sure to get in touch with her. Uh, from my understanding, there have been no announcements from city planning um, outside of the fact that it is the MPU's 50th anniversary, uh, so they will be hosting um, some public engagement events. If you'd like to be more involved, as they will be doing um, some banners throughout the community as well um, and throughout all of the city of Atlanta, uh, please just reach out and we can connect you with Leah Lofton, or sorry, with uh, Alira. No, Leah LaRue. Oh, Leah LaRue, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Some of our people here. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Leah LaRue, and she will connect you uh, to those st specific committees. Um, so if you would like to participate, please let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, I will motion to adjourn our meeting at 843. Um, Rebecca, wait. Wait, until we adjourn, we all need to say happy birthday to our newest public safety committee member and now ad hoc committee chair, uh, Melody Ford. Happy birthday, Melody. Happy Where's that little birthday, canine that sits in your lap and says, happy birthday, mommy. <laughs> okay, she deserted me a little while ago and now she's sleeping in her chair. <laughs> happy birthday, Melody. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 36. Oh yeah, forever. But you you have to <laughs> celebrate uh, in the after the shadow of Dr. King's birthday every year. Uh, no, right. I missed it by one day, but I was a creamy baby anyway, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys, and we do stay on for our after party. So if you have any more conversations, I will officially adjourn the meeting now at eight forty four. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.